Hello everyone, I'm Dasha Jamison with Red Rock Pastel Society of Nevada, and today we have very special guest, Karen Margulis. She is a senior juror for our 2021 Red Rock Jury Member Web Show. Karen, hello. Hi, well, pleasure to be here. I'm glad that we could do this together. Uh, thank you for drawing such a beautiful exposition for us and awards being announced, but like if that would be in person show, we would be able to meet together and see all the beautiful paintings. So we kind of try to impersonate them and sub by several images on our gallery walkthrough today. Yes, um, it, well, well, thank you, first of all, for asking me to be one of the jurors. It was really quite an honor to uh, uh, get a chance to look through so many beautiful paintings. And I was just, it was not an easy task, you know, to select the paintings for the exhibition. But I, I was really thrilled when, when when we're, it was able to see them all together, um, it really just shows the the beauty and the versatility of pastel. So it was really uh, a lot of fun to be a part of. Yes, and the uh, show is so diverse and it's actually showing endless possibilities of the medium. And that's what we're all about, to promote brilliant medium of a pastel. Yes, it, re it really was. It did show such a, a wide variety of, of paintings and styles and uh, really was really inspiring to see so many wonderful paintings. Thank you, Karen. And I prepared a little presentation for us. So let me share the screen. There we go. And uh, thank you again for being with us. And the first one, one what actually uh, got also honorable mention by Tony Alain. This is the Jill Glassman Tatered but Not Turn. Yes, well, before I start talking about the, the paintings that I selected to discuss, I just wanted to give, if it's okay, a, a couple of brief words about what I look for when I am looking at not only my own work, but when I'm doing something like this, judging a show or looking at other work. Um, I, I first of all look at the what I like to call the nuts and bolts. What what things make a good painting? The things that we're all familiar with, uh, the use of color, the composition, the the value structure, um, the 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 way the artist uses edges, the way the artist might create a feeling of depth in in the painting, especially if it's a landscape painting. Um, I'm also looking at, is there, I like to call it a visual journey for the viewer. In other words, does that painting uh, invite me to come closer and have a, a closer look, but as I'm looking, am I compelled to move around the painting? Is there, is there, uh, as I say, a visual journey? Is the, is, does the artist kind of show me around the painting? And um, is it the painting telling a story? And so I, I look for that. Um, I also look for things that might take the view, the viewer's eye out of the painting too quickly. So I, I want to be able to participate in the painting. Um, so like I say, I look first at the nuts and bolts. Uh, and it, it, if a painting is working on all of those levels, then the next thing is I have to move on to um, the, the emotional response. Um, and this in the show of this caliber, m most of the paintings did meet all the requirements for what makes a so-called good painting, G good compositions, good use of value, uh, good interesting use of color. So the next step is that emotional pull. Um, and uh, I, I, um, I have a list of things that I, I look at and I want to, um, when I look at a painting, does I like I look at it and I say, hmm, am I really interested? Does it every time I look at it, a, am I still interested? Does it hold my interest? Um, and more importantly, do I think about it after I've seen it? In other words, does it stay in my mind? And if it does, that means that it really connected with me on a on a more emotional level. So it wasn't just a good painting. It wasn't just a good painting by having the nuts and bolts, you know, all in place, but it had a little, so I went beyond it, it. It had a little something extra. 
And one of the things, it was a piece of advice that I had gotten early on, uh, and, and that was if you want to have your paintings stand out, or if you want to to have your work known, or you know people recognize your work, uh, develop a style. I don't know, however you want to put it, you have to find a way to first of all connect with the subject matter that you love the most, and then find a way to show it in in a way that may not be done um, by others, like. For an example, we're looking at this uh, still life of sunflowers. Somehow, sunflowers have been painted, you know, countless times. So, how can you find a way to interpret it in a different way that 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 when people look at it, they they are drawn to it or connect emotionally to it? But you know, they don't maybe not even know why, but in a way it's done in, in a different way. And that's that's what I'm looking for. So I selected a few paintings to talk about um, and all of them, but well, they're all, all of them, but one are florals or have flowers in them. And, and I selected that because that's my favorite thing to paint. And I, I find it so wonderful how many ways we can interpret the same subject of flowers or flowers in a landscape um, and how we all you know bring our own voice to the subject matter and if I could give advice to anyone who's listening is find something that you connect to that you love and then find a way to paint it in a way that's different from others you know look at it in a different way so when we talk about the paintings that I'm going to share with you um, today, I'm going to just point out some of the ways that they are taking the same type of subject matter and interpret it in a different way. So we'll start with, with this one. As I said, sunflowers have been painted countless times, but how has this artist managed to make them different, make them her own? And I would point out that to me, it is the way that this artist uses mark making, how the artist uses the pastel to have a variety of marks and you can see the variety of marks in the painting. Um, they're visible, there's some linear mark making and there's some like to call chunky mark making, but the marks are, are exciting, they're fresh, they're not overworked. In other words, you can see that this artist in many places have put down the marks and just left them alone. And, and that's not always easy to do. Uh, next one, there'll be David Bramall, uh, Winter Hedge Girl. Yes. Okay. So this one, while it's not necessarily uh, a floral, it's, it's a, a tangle of trees, there are some um, little weedy, looks like little, maybe little hints of flowers in the foreground. Um, but this is another example of an artist uh, treating the subject in a very different way. Uh, and what's drawn me to this painting in particular is the mood that has been created. Uh, it, it, I feel like it, I'm, I feel the, the, the moody quality of uh, the, it looks like it's a foggy day, a kind of a misty type day. And I think the artist was very successful in creating that uh, wonderful moodiness um, and that's by virtue of the colors, the subdued palette, but yet have that, that, that really wonderful uh, green in the background that just shows up so well because of that feeling of, of that overcast light, that quality of light. Um, but it's funny because now that this painting is enlarged on my screen, um, I am noticing a lot more. So it's one of those things where this painting struck me for the mood, but each time I come back to it, I see more, I notice more. Like I didn't notice the little tiny dots of flowers and the really uh, interesting mark making in the grasses in the foreground. So it's one of those things that it, it grows in stature, meaning every time I come back to it, uh, I find more and more it's intriguing and I want to know more about it. Um, so I think that is one of the one of the paintings that have stood out to me and it's kind of stayed in my in my mind uh, and primarily because of that mood that has been created. 
And this painting by David Bramout uh, also received your Jewish Choice Award. Thank you for that. Yeah, okay. Um, now we're here we're back with another uh, painting that has flowers. And uh, when we talk about taking a subject matter and making it your own and, and finding a different way to express it, um, this artist has an interesting point of view. The way that she's looking and the way that she portrays the flowers is not your traditional straight on look, right? We're looking kind of at an angle of, uh, above, we're above it and looking down. Um, and I find that very intriguing that that's unusual. Uh, it's an unusual point of view, but it's, it, it makes me stop and pause. It makes me want to look further. Um, and when I talked earlier about having a visual journey, like inviting the viewer in and, and pulling the viewer's eye around the painting, this artist has done that effectively. If you look at the, the green, uh, longer green leaves on the right hand side, how they are coming out of the, the glass but pulling us into the painting and then using wonderful bits of color to move us through uh, the, the flowers, the arrangement of flowers. So um, again, if I were to say I selected this one in this grouping because it is a familiar uh, subject matter, but it's portrayed in a very unique way. And that's what makes it different. And that's what makes it exciting and intriguing to me. Thank you, Karen. And uh, we were talking about fireworks by Adrian Giuliani. Congratulations, Adrian. Beautiful work. Next painting is by Valeria Kulikova. I will ride my bike for a long time. Uh, yeah, also, this is a, a painting that definitely. Uh, tells a story. And so that's another thing that I, I look for is I, I, I want to I want to be told a story when I look at a painting, but I want to participate in the story. And I think this is a great uh, um, one to participate in because I don't exactly know what's going I want to know more, that, let's put it that way. And then her title, I guess, helps support that idea of what's going on, where is she going, where did she go, why is the bike right there in the middle of the, of the field of flowers? Um, so this one I'm drawn to because of, uh, it's such an effective use of telling a story. Um, I, I really want to know more. And of course, the nuts and bolts are all there, meaning the, the use of color is wonderful. The, um, the way the tree is painted, the edges that are used, the, the hard and soft edges and the sky holes are beautiful. There's a wonderful feeling of depth. So we've got those uh, lighter, cooler, duller colors in the distance. Uh, the detail in the foreground to middle ground uh, and then less detail as we go back in space. So all that is done really well. Um, as far as portraying flowers, because I selected paintings that are portraying flowers, uh, I will point out that I really enjoy the way this artist ha has painted these flowers showing us just a few of the blossoms, whereas most of them are in larger masses. So it does not read as uh, polka dots. It looks very natural. It looks it looks believable. Uh, and I think she's done a, a great job doing that. Um, but this one stands out to me because of the effect of uh, emotional response I had. It's like, I want to know more. I want to I want to participate in this story and I want to, you know, make up my own story. I, I could, was well, one of the things I love to do anyways, is people watch and try to figure out what, what's going on. And this really is compelling in that way. Thank you, Karen. And congratulations, Valeria. Next painting by Nancy Cumming, Color Pop, Pop, Pop. Now this one is different uh, from the others in that it is a more abstracted painting. Uh, we can see that it's, uh, well, to me, I'm interpreting it as, as grasses and flowers, but it is done in a very different way. Um, whereas the previous painting had some flowers and grasses, this is a totally different style. And uh, I just, 
really enjoy the whimsical way that uh, this artist has interpreted a very familiar subject. Um, and it just, to me, goes to show that, you know, we can find our own voice and mm -hmm. interpret the same type of scene in such a different way. And that's what makes art in general so wonderful. Um, but I really enjoy the, the colors, obviously, in the title color. The colors really do pop. Um, but it, it, there, it's, it, there's a cohesiveness about it as well. Uh, when I talk about a visual journey, I'm given a visual journey by the direction of the marks and the placement of those little pops of color. Um, so I really enjoy looking at this. And this is, was one that kind of stood out to me and made me think, oh, that's a really unique take on a very familiar subject. Um, and I really enjoy it. And I, if I think about it after I've seen it, then to me, it, it had an emotional appeal and it, you know, it, and I connected with it. Love this artist. Congratulations, Nancy. Thank you, Karen, for your comments. And we have the last painting of our selection by Olga Abramova and it's White Wheeled. And so the, this is uh, another similar type of subject. So we have a field with grasses. Um, there's a, a, a very nice, believable feeling of depth in this landscape, um, but yet it is very different from the others. And I think in, in uh, most regards, what stands out to me is the color palette that is used. And so this very subdued palette of neutrals uh, is to me working so well. And it just, again, creates a different type of mood just by the, the simple use of, of color. Um, and so that's just another way that we can interpret the same type of subject by the way we use color. So the very first one we talked about to me, the mark making stood out. <clears throat> and while I love the mark making in this particular painting, what I think I'm drawn to is the uh, beautiful subdued color palette. Um, uh, just a really wonderful use of those neutrals. Um, and Olga gives us that visual journey by having those dark areas in the foreground kind of lead us to the middle distance and the little trees. And then we are compelled to move even further back into the painting. Um, uh, so I think she did a great job. And it's again, one of the paintings that stood out to me. Um, I was drawn to the use of color and it, and I thought about it afterwards. It's like, that was just a beautiful uh, interpretation of a very, um, a plain, like uh, uh, what? What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, uh, just an ordinary scene, but she's elevated it and made it something beautiful. Like uh, the great man said, Richard McKinley, finding beauty in a mundane. Absolutely, uh, that's right. Uh, that's one of the things that I love to do as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm always excited when I see it done so well. Congratulations, Olga, on successful painting. Thank you, Karen. And uh, before we say a few words for our participants and encourage artists who didn't participate for the next show, I want to just uh, say a huge thank you to our sponsors. Amazing support what we got as a pastel society and all the wonderful prizes for our uh, participants and winners. Thank you. And I'm going to stop presentation and let you, Karen, say a couple of words for artists, just encourage them painting. It's a words of encouragement? Um, yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Well, keep painting. I mean, that's a lot of times we get caught up in this idea of painting for a show or trying to get our paintings so that we're accepted in exhibitions or win prizes in exhibitions. And I always like to say, you have to enjoy the journey. It's for all of us, it, it, we're all working towards getting better, no matter what level we're at. Um, and that if we are painting for someone else, it takes the joy out of it. And then there's no purpose. So I always like to find joy in what I'm doing. And I'll 
I'd like to give a little bit of advice. I have a quote from um, Erwin Greenberg, and this has to go with um, exhibitions and whether you get accepted or whether you win a prize. He says, prizes are nice, but the real competition is with yesterday's performance. So we're not really competing against one another. We're trying to get better uh, on our, uh, for our own self, for our own enjoyment, our own joy. Um, and, and sometimes we put too much pressure on ourselves to perform rather than to be playful and enjoy. And I think that's an important thing to keep in mind. Thank you, Karen. It was a great reminder. Amazing quote. I need to probably put it above it's my desk. Yes. <laughs> my easel. And uh, just keep painting, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure.